In February of this year, the French automotive industry issued a warning about GigaPress technology and its supposed risks. They claimed the process was dangerous and it should be outlawed. They even said this, they're concerned that the use of gigacastings could have significant environmental and financial consequences for consumers. They highlighted this would be the case if the gigacastings are in need of repair. They said they're just unrepairable. Is this actually factual? Is the French automotive industry telling the truth? Even though many manufacturers, Volvo, Hyundai, many others, have they come along and said, you know what? Gigacasting is a great idea. It's the only way to make an electric car actually structurally rigid and lightweight at the same time. It also improves the crash strength of a car significantly. But there is still, and there's still a hell of a lot of naysayers, a hell of a lot of people just coming along and saying, you know what? Gigacasting is a nightmare. Tesla should never have done it. It's never going to work. However, there has been some changes in the industry. And I don't mean changes like, um, for example, Huawei now being able to make an EV in 67 seconds thanks to the biggest gigacasting machine in the world. I don't mean changes like, for example, about 12 different automakers now using or planning on using gigacasting machines. I mean changes on what you do after a vehicle is in a crash. Now, this is the biggest the biggest naysayers reason for why gigacasting should not be around, why Tesla shouldn't have used it, why everyone shouldn't be using it. They say that after a car's been in a crash, basically it's a write-off because the one piece or two piece part, the big structural part of the car is, has been damaged and therefore the car shouldn't be driven anymore. But that's not the case. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking, and it's great to see you. Just want to say a big thank you to our Patreon supporters. Really appreciate you guys. YouTube members as well. By the way, YouTube members, there are, you guys do get access to YouTube member-only videos, which are posted approximately once a day, depending on the day. Now, guys, the Tesla Model Y Gigacast repairs. Yeah, repairs. You can repair a Gigacast part. They have improved significantly. A few years ago, any collision damage to a Gigacast part would mean you would have to replace the entire car. No, actually, that's not even true either, guys. You don't replace the entire car. If a gigacasting part was damaged in the crash, you can replace that entire gigacast element. Now, it's not a write-off. I know some insurers did write them off, and then if you're smart, you come along and you can just buy the gigacast part straight from Tesla. They're not actually that expensive either. I actually um, made a video showing you guys pro exact prices and I don't remember the exact pricing of the Gigacast part, but it was around about something like two and a half thousand dollars. It wasn't very much for what is an enormous piece of cast metal. Anyhow, a few years ago, Tesla was uh, obviously an innovator and it was criticized heavily by the entire automotive media, um, by not the entire, but you know, 90, 99% of them. Many people who did like or didn't like Tesla also said it was a joke, it was a terrible idea. If it, would, if it was ever gonna work, everyone else would have been doing it for the last 50 years. That's what I heard them say. If it was gonna work, Toyota would have already been doing it. That's one thing I heard people say. Anyhow, since Tesla innovated this part now, you know, Toyota have now said it's a great idea and um, they said it's engineering genius when they actually stripped apart a Tesla Model Y. That's not a, um, a made up story, by the way. That's actually a direct quote from Toyota's engineers. Since then, we now know that many manufacturers are, have ordered giga casting machines from Hydra, which is the manufacturer of those machines and they're based in Italy. But there is also a Chinese supplier as well now. Anyhow, what is a giga casting part? Well, using a large casting machine, automakers can now assemble a vehicle's underbody using only two or three parts, and that reduces the, well, it reduces lots of things. Failure rate, um, normally those parts would represent 100 to 150 separate parts that are all stamped together, welded together, glued together, molded together, whatever it may be. It reduces you know, 100 to 150 parts down to two or three, depending on the car. Some people say maybe one day one. So it seems to be a huge advantage because that reduces the weight, but it increases the strength of the car at the same time significantly. 
it also increases the torsional rigidity, which is something you feel when turning. You feel if a car's more torsionally rigid, then you feel that when you're turning it and actually feels like the car handles better. Now, if you think that's not relevant, why is a company like Toyota taking cars and saying, oh, now the 2024 model, it's an improvement over last year because we added 108 more spot welds to the car. If this wasn't something that manufacturers saw as necessary, they wouldn't continually be doing things like that. Every single year we hear those kinds of claims, particularly when they take a, like a, a non-performance car, then they make a performance version out of it, the same car. Oh, we added another 68 spot welds to one part of the car and another 74 to the another part. Well, yeah, you can see why they're doing that because there's so many spots and so many welds that can have a little bit of flex, but Giga Casting removes all of that, which is really, I think, an incredibly good thing. Because of this, Tesla was able to drastically lower the cost of manufacturing and improve the production of efficiency of the Model Y, but also people are often curious to know why is a Tesla Model Y, why does it weigh only 1,900 kilograms or around 4,300, 4,200 pounds? Why is it lighter than equivalent electric cars or cars that are significantly smaller than the Model Y, it's lighter than them? That's one of the reasons. People had understandable concerns though about what happens when a, a Tesla, particularly a Model Y, was in a collision. Uh, replacement parts, they said, would be impossible. The cars would be totaled. What a waste. Anyhow, John from Evolve EV Specialists on YouTube actually talked about a Model Y that was recently involved in a crash. He said the process of repairing it has become much better. And this has happened for quite a lot of people now. John said this, Early on, it was an all or nothing thing. We had to replace them. But since then, there are lots of repair methods that have been developed. John points out a line running through the rear frame rail of the vehicle. If damage had occurred there, he said the portion could have been uh, severed and replaced. We have the option to literally cut this piece off and attach a new piece of cast aluminum to this spot. The new piece would be attached using rivets, structural adhesives, and a backing plate. When inspecting a Model Y for damage, they're looking specifically for cracks in the cast aluminum, and they do occur sometimes. He says that after a severe collision, most vehicles will see some movement in the multiple structural components that make up the underbody. However, in a Tesla, while the gear cast pieces do have some flexibility and the possibility to bend, in most cases, they shatter. Thankfully, though, there appear to be neither cracks nor bends in the rear frame rail after this car was in a crash. He said, what's interesting is as hard as this thing was hit, there is no damage to the Giga casting. Incredibly well designed and an incredibly strong vehicle for a hit that hard. So he's saying that actually what this means is if you're in a crash, this is one of the reasons why Tesla Model Ys in particular have been in many crashes where, you know, police... Oh, first responders would have thought everyone would be dead. A look at the crash, but actually the vehicle's held up structurally incredibly well and it's protected the people inside the car. Repair costs and complexity can vary greatly though. So what can happen is for many segments of a Giga Cars piece, small 50 millimeter cracks can simply be welded up. Other areas can be welded up to 30 millimeters as long as a backing plate is put behind it for support. But if it's bigger than this, if it's worse than this, the entire piece could be replaced. And that kind of makes the point here though, doesn't it? Um, Giga casting pieces, the entire piece can be replaced. This is actually viable. So it's actually rare that a Tesla or any vehicle using Giga casting now is written off and the insurer may choose to do it, but they don't actually have to. This is definitely an option. So in France recently, um, the entire automotive industry in France, there's a, a, like an automotive industry body. They have actually tried really hard to ban giga casting. They say, uh, you know, it's um, problematic for the insurance industry, it's unsafe. They, they start all these other reasons, but the truth is that they don't use that process yet. And it's like, it feels threatening to them that the industry is moving towards potentially getting rid of suppliers. I mean, think about it. Suppliers are supplying lots of different parts to these cars that now they can't supply anymore because all those pieces are turned into one single piece. Now, personally, this is the cost of progress. You know, when things, prog when things progress, they get better, they get safer, they get cheaper, they get, well, they get actually just more advanced. This is a good thing for the consumer. But I think the reason 
the number one reason why some people still hate gigacasting is because they hate change. Some of us just can't stand when things change. And I get it. That's a very human response. Thanks for watching.